Earlier this month, London, Ontario became the first city in Canada to ditch the first-past-the-post system of voting in favor of a ranked ballot. That means when voters head to the polls for next year's municipal election, they won't just mark one X for one candidate. Josh Morgan is one of the London City Councillors who backed the change, and he joins us now to explain why they made the move. Josh, good to see you again. Good to see you Thanks again. Thanks for making the trip in from London. What, what was the problem you were trying to fix that resulted in your choosing this new way of voting? Sure. Well, the first past the post system is the problem we're trying to fix. That's the system that uh, Ontario municipalities have been using forever. Um, in fact, most uh, governments across Canada have been using. The first past the post system is a great system uh, if you if you want to just choose the winner by majority. And in some cases, that majority can be as little as in the 20s. Uh, so it's I, not really a majority. No, it's no. It's just the highest in, plurality. In, in fact, I ran an election in 2006 that I lost by 23 votes and all four candidates got in the 20% range, which means the winner had three quarters of, the, of their, their constituents vote against them. And so that first past the post system is really, uh, really doesn't give you that majority mandate that you need to, to be able to go forward and govern. So your concern is that, that somebody could win, well, for example, across the road, yeah. there's a city councillor here in Toronto who won with, I think, about 17% of the votes because there were dozens of candidates running. Yes, and so you face the rest of your term facing criticisms of, well, only 17% of people supported you. What sort of mandate do you have to push forward these So changes? what have you come up with to fix that? Well, well, what we came up with was the ranked ballot system, uh, and what that does is empower Londoners with more choice. They have the ability to express more preferences on the ballot, and that's really what it's about, is empowering them to give more information into the election system so, so that we can instead choose of, candidates. Instead of one X on the ballot, what are they going to do they're come gonna next have, year? They're going to have three uh, that they can make, and it's up to three. Uh, people can still go in and just choose their preferred candidate, or they can give a second and third choice. So they will have all three of those options available to them, and they can decide to express as many preferences as they would like up to three. And then on election night, when the ballots are counted, how will the counting be different? Well, how it will work is it'll be exactly the same if there's a majority winner. So if one of the candidates gets over 50% of the votes, they'll be declared the winner right, right away. If someone is in one of those situations, like we discussed, where they are below the threshold of 50%, the person with the least amount of votes will drop off the ballot and that ballot will, will look to the second choice rankings, and those will be counted towards the remaining candidates. And that continues until either there's two candidates left, in which case the one with the most votes wins, or someone passes at the 50% threshold. So how many members on London City Council? There are 15. 15. So uh, next year, October 22nd next year, yeah. all 15 members of London City Council will have received 50, at least 50% plus one of the votes. Yes, in, in pretty much all circumstances, that would be the case. There, there may be a small circumstance where you get to the last two candidates and because of some exhausted ballots, they might be slightly below that threshold, but it'll be very close. Now, you obviously went through a public consultation before agreeing to this. Give us a sense about how much the public input was taken into account on this. Sure. Well, we, this was a, a process for me that, that went back all the way to my election campaign. This is something I campaigned on. So when I, I talk about how I engage the public, it was knocking on doors and talking to people in the election, making a promise to move forward and push for this sort of change. And so for me, it was an election promise. The city, um, to, to move to this in this direction, had to follow the rules outlined by the province. And I should say, back in that election, it wasn't even legislatively possible to do ranked ballots. It was something that the province brought in um, to allow municipalities to have that choice. Yeah, they gave you the option. Right. They weren't telling you how to do it. They said, if you want to, go ahead. Exactly. And 443 municipalities said they didn't want to, and one said yes. You that, were the one. being us, yes. London was the one. That's right. And so on this, we are truly a, a leader in democratic innovation, and I think the eyes of the country will be on us next election. Now, having said all that, do you have a, a good enough sense about whether the public is on side for the changes that you've made? Yes, I, I feel the public is on side for the changes um, for a couple of reasons. One, we did do a public consultation, and even in the city's surveying, which should always be taken as just one piece of the information, 50% uh, of people um, said that they were willing to move to a ranked ballot. Um, there were about 46% <clears throat> who did not want to, um, so it was fairly divided. Um, but there were definitely those members of the London community who wanted to express more choices, and this gives them the option. It also allows people who just want to express one choice to still do that. Um, the, there's that flexibility on the ballot. But we will be able to rank up to three choices in the next election, and so for those who want to do so, they will have that option. 50 to 46 is not exactly a ringing endorsement, so what do you infer from that? 
Well, I infer that it was it was a very divided opinion on this. And when I did my own consultations uh, at community meetings and ward meetings, uh, a lot of people would say no or unsure because they weren't exactly sure how this works. And this is one of the criticisms that we faced is it's confusing, it's new, I'm not sure if this is something that, that that's for me. And through the discussion and the, um, the consultation, uh, people came to realize that, oh, what you're giving me is more choice. Uh, mm -hmm. I understand that, I get that, and, and I don't mind doing that. If I want to vote for one, I can. If I want to vote for three, that's fine. So the public education campaign leading up to the 2018 election is incredibly important in London because uh, that will allow people to understand exactly what we're doing and uh, we can move forward together. One of the things that we're told about ranked ballot is that you may get a lot of the dirt out of politics because you can't afford to really run a hard-edged wedge issue campaign because you might actually need second and third you know, choice support in order to get over the 50% threshold. Do you have any idea whether or not that's actually going to happen? I have no idea. And every campaign is different. And mm -hmm. so whether or not it will lead to uh, friendlier campaigns uh, is something that we'll have to see. In other municipalities, people say that that has happened. And there are certainly jurisdictions in the United States where that is a claim that has been made. For me, one of the big positives is that there will be more candidates on the ballot. There will be more people who stay in the race. Uh, that will lead to more competitive elections. And we all know competitive elections are what drives turnout. When someone thinks that it's close, when someone thinks that it's competitive, they will come out and vote. And candidates will stay in the race in a ranked ballot because there is no incentive for them to be strategic mm. and, and drop out of the race. I mean, so. th theoretically, y you will not want to go run a scorched earth policy against your opponent because, frankly, you are against all of your opponents. Because theoretically, you want their supporters to support you as their second or third choice. Yeah, abso so presumably absolutely. Presumably, that should make campaigns a little less toxic, presumably. Yes, absolutely. And um, Mayor uh, Betty Hodges in um, Minneapolis uh, is someone who's talked extensively about what it's like to campaign under a ranked ballot. Mm -hmm. And she really talks about when you approach that door and the voter says, sorry, you're not my first choice. Uh, what you do, you start to engage them in a, in a different way. You still are listening and you're exploring why is it that you don't support me? How can I earn your second choice vote? Mm -hmm. And she said that was a very humbling experience for a politician because you have to think of a wider set of issues. You have to think about the wider community and how you're going to garner that support from a majority of uh, your constituents. Yeah, we, we should say the, the Conservative Party of Canada is using basically the same system to choose their new leader. They're also going yes. to the ranked ballot. Uh, absolutely, this is something that is not new for Canada. It is new for municipalities. We are the first uh, municipality to abandon the first past the post system, but certainly uh, ranked balloting has happened across North America and is happening in Canada in that leadership race. Now, I again, you tell me if I'm wrong here, I presume this will cost more to run an election this way because you're not just counting ballots once and that's it. You may have to count them twice or thrice or four times or, I mean, depending. Is that right? Yeah, there, there will be an additional cost. Our elections in London cost about $1.9 million, and the estimate is that this will be about a half a million dollars more. Uh, a good majority of that is the education campaign um, to make sure that people know that this is the change that's happening and, and to provide extra staff on site in the polling stations to ensure that voting goes smoothly. Uh, it's not really about the counting because there will be an algorithm and voting machines that will process that. Uh, it's more about the education and making sure that we have uh, the staff and the personnel there to, to make sure it's gonna work. And of course, the development of leading up the election, the voting al algorithm itself. Mm -hmm. And for those who say, we don't want our city council spending any more money, let alone half a million dollars on this when it could go to childcare or better transit or whatever, what's the argument? Well, I think that in, in this case, we're talking about democratic innovation, and there are many decisions that the municipality makes that cost more money. Uh, this is about giving more choice to voters. It is going to cost a little bit more the first time we do it, and I, I think it's a worthwhile expenditure. And when you talk about a half a million dollars on a billion dollar budget, we're not talking about a significant increase. It is an increase. We do take spending that money seriously, but it is, it is about better democracy, and I think that's worth the money. Now, you elected politicians make policy for the city but you rely on your staff for advice and to provide reports and et cetera, et cetera. What did the city clerk's office have to say about uh, the advisability of doing this? Sure, so the city clerk's office was against for one main reason. Uh, that is uh, that no one has done it before. There is no algorithm with the Ontario regulations in place that has been tested. And that makes sense because no one's ever moved to the system before. So until someone does it, it's never gonna happen. So. The clerks were naturally risk adverse and said, we don't want to be first uh, because it is something that has never been done. And uh, we, there is a lot of extra work up front to, to prove that the algorithm, uh, algorithm works and is ready 
and can be implemented. And our clerks now will have a plan where they will start the process of preparing for the election about six months ahead of time. Uh, and that algorithm, I am not worried about it being developed because like you said, the Conservative Party is already using a rank mm -hmm. ballot. These things are out there. For it to be translated to the Ontario regulations really is not an, ex an extensive amount of work. And quite frankly, we have a, a, a burgeoning tech um, uh, industry in London and they design entire video games uh, with thousands of lines of code uh, in less time than it will take for this 20 to 30 lines of code for the, for the, the algorithm. Okay, so take us 16 months forward now yeah. and if we're in October of next year and somebody's going to arrive at their polling station. Yeah. Um, is this, are, are you writing one, two, and three beside people's names or are you, you know, is, is it going to be counted by a machine or how does it work? Yeah, so currently on a first past the post ballot, you basically see the names and then there's little circles that you color in the circle beside the mm -hmm. name because it's read by an optical scanner. In the ranked ballot, they will have up to three boxes. So if you're only choosing one candidate, it will look identical to the way that the first past the post ballot worked. You will check off the circle the exact same way as you have in the past. What you'll have is two other boxes beside that where you can express a second and third choice. And so it is not gonna be fundamentally different uh, on the ballot than what people have done and experienced in the past in London. They'll simply have more options to add and more preferences to express. And you are quite confident that there will be no confusion for people, is this my first choice or is this my second choice or it's yeah. all crystal clear? Yeah, so in that survey that, that I told you about, that we talked about earlier, uh, the other question we asked is, how confident are you that you understand how a winner will be chosen? 87%. Uh, were confident, 10% uh, were somewhat confident, and only 3% were not confident. Mm -hmm. In other words, people understand how the counting is going to work. People understand how to express their preferences, and people understand how rank ballots work in London. And I'm confident that people will be able to rank their preferences. It is not going to be confusing. People rank things every day. People express their preferences every day. I mean, you're a, you're a you're a hockey fan, right? Yeah, correct. So, so you have your preferred team. And when your preferred team isn't in the playoffs, do you cheer for, for a second team? Uh, no. No, never. So, <laughs> it's so you lease would, or bust with me. But I understand <laughs> you, that there are some others who pick so, a second choice. Yeah, so you would, you, would, you would be one who would just, just put that on. Well, there are many people who say, my team's out or my team never makes the playoffs. Right. I still want to support them. But now I want to support a team who's in the playoffs. Now I want to try to choose a winner. And, uh, and that's really what we're doing, um, is allowing people the, the ability to express Josh, that extra preference. Come on, if the London Knights are not in the playoffs, are you cheering for somebody else? Well, no, of course not. There you but, go, okay. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about the provincial role here for a second. Sure. Because the province, as we indicated earlier, uh, put the option out for municipalities to do their thing. Mm -hmm. Yours is the only one that decided to hop on this new right. idea. Uh, you know, Toronto considered this. The Capital yeah. City Council considered this and made some musings about how intriguing it was, and at the end of the day, decided not to do it. Yeah. They came to you, didn't they? Yeah. You had some people from Toronto come to you. Yeah. What for? They came down to, uh, to talk to some of our counselors about the, the negative aspects of moving forward with this. Yeah. Did, did they try to convince you not to do it? Uh, some of them did, yeah, absolutely. What'd you think of that? Uh, well, first off, uh, it wasn't gonna impact my uh, decision at all because I listen to my constituents and I make decisions for the City of London. It is interesting to see incumbents in other cities wanting to come and try to influence the decisions of London. And that is because as a leader in this, um, it may be a catalyst for it moving to other cities. And 443 municipalities have said no. And incumbents, this is not a system that advantages incumbents. When you listen to what it does, more candidates, more competitive mm. elections. Um, That's why they didn't want it. People don't want mm. it if you're an incumbent. It's, it's, it's not you're successful in the current system as an incumbent. So why change? You're naturally going to say, this is a great system, it elected me. Well, right? that's why I, I wanted to ask whether you think there's a, a role for the provincial government to, to not just offer the option, but to say, okay, you guys want to skate on the 2018 election? Fine, but by 2022, this is the way it's going to be. Do you think they should take that step? Uh, I think it should be, remain a choice of municipalities and a choice for voters in those municipalities. So I don't mind that municipalities have a choice. Uh, what's right for London is not necessarily right for anywhere else. What I will say is the province definitely has a role in supporting London as the only city in Ontario. When you see someone innovating, when you see someone moving forward, that best practices can be learned from, that the education campaign that we put together uh, can be shared with other municipalities who want to consider this, um, there's definitely a case to be made to ask the province for support for London in what does this that particular mean? election. What does that mean? It means two things, I think. One, uh, financial support in developing the, the education campaign, the materials we'll put together, because those are transferable and, and relevant to municipalities across the province. And two, as the only one to do it, some of those risks and concerns that our clerks had 
I think we can ask for support from the province to assist us in uh, the testing of the software, the development of the algorithm, and quite frankly, in a worst case scenario, the uh, ability to act ex expeditiously with some legislation to allow us to count the ballots in a different way. Mm -hmm. Currently, if there was a problem in counting the ballots, the legislation restricts us to counting them the same way again. Mm -hmm. uh, if we ever need to go to a hand count, we would need um, some quick legislation from the, from the province. And as the only ones doing this, maybe that's something or some sort of flexibility mm -hmm. that we'll need uh, to, them to commit to. But uh, not something I'm, I'm worried about, but those are the types of things they can support when innovation is happening. Let, let's finish up on this. The uh, election next year will be October 22nd, 2018. Yeah. I'd like to know what you hope the people in London say on the 23rd of October, 2018, the morning after, about their new experience of ranked balloting. Well, I hope that they're, they, they say this was great, that we were glad that we were able to express more choices. I think you'll see some races where people won by a majority, and uh, hopefully you'll see some races where ranked balloting uh, had to be counted. And I hope what they, they really will see is that in the election campaign, when they were deciding who to support, that they had more choice, more diversity of voices, and more options to express their preferences so that they get city councillors that they can say, we're supportive of this group, they have a mandate to govern, and, uh, and we wish them all the best. Great. We'll watch with interest, that's for sure. Yes, for sure. That's Josh Morgan, London City Councillor. They're going to a ranked ballot for the 22nd of October, 2018. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.